This officially marks the beginning of the end of an era and Sam's time in this workshop. So the purpose of today's video is one, to mutually stroll down memory lane of this building, of the origins of Sam Craft and everything I've learned, maybe you guys have learned as well, over the years. Two, tell you exactly what in the world we mean by this is the end, what is happening, what is going on. And three, to share the plans of Sam Craft for the future. Where is he going? What's it look like? What's ahead? So maybe the best thing to do is to start off with my last shop tour, the last tour of Sam Craft shop. This workshop area is a 16 foot by 16 foot area. Now I say area because the building as a whole is 16 feet deep and 24 feet wide. However, that section over there is an eight by eight old home office and then another eight by eight storage junk area. And I've never really considered it part of the Sam Craft workshop ecosystem. This is a building that I built myself about, I think, six years ago. At that time, it was the biggest construction project I'd ever done. It was probably my third or fourth workshop I had built throughout my lifetime as a maker. However, this is and was the biggest workshop I've ever had. There's a full hour long video of the entire build of my workshop. It is a horrible quality video, but ironically, it's my number one viewed video on my channel. I don't understand YouTube. Either way, if you're interested to see really every single detail of every single thing of building this storage shed inspired workshop, I'll put a link to that video down below. I will go ahead and tell you, honestly, it is not interesting. In the world of Samcraft videos, if you are here within the last year or two, you're gonna be bored out of your gourd when you see that <laughs> and really wonder, wow, this guy started from nothing. So anyway, this building is 16 feet deep and 24 feet wide. The ceiling heights range from eight feet at the back to 12 feet at the front, which is where you guys are standing now. Back when I built this, I think the total cost for this entire structure was right at $3,000 for absolutely everything to get the storage shed style build, you know, foundation, flooring, walls, siding, roof, all that stuff. No insulation, no wiring, which back then felt like a whole lot of money. However, in today's market and today's lumber prices, wow, I would love to get the same size building for the same price. Oh, well. So it's been a very long time since I did a shop tour, officially at least. Um, I've kind of fell out of the habit of doing that, mainly because my shop hasn't really changed a whole lot in the past uh, at least a year. The latest biggest addition has been my CNC and then the laser engravers. They all kind of live on this wall, but for posterior reasons and as a way to remember the end of this building, we'll go ahead and do a quick shop tour. Now I'm not gonna go through details of saying this is this, this is that. It's just gonna be quick layout. So don't worry, I'm not gonna bore you to death. At least I hope I don't. I'm standing here at the front door, right to my left in this corner, hidden entirely almost, is my lathe. So I don't do a lot of wood turning anymore. I used to do a lot of wood turning. Actually, that's how my business started. But with market prices and lumber availabilities, that's kind of fell through the floor over the past two and a half to three years. My local supply of turning blanks has either disappeared or prices have shot through the roof to where it just doesn't, it's not fun. It's not fun for me to turn something that costs, you know, $25, $30 just for the raw material. I can only have so many bowls and stuff. And honestly, they're not things that people really buy. So from a business standpoint, I started with turning and I kind of quit doing turning. Next to the corner of shame of Lathe Town is the bandsaw. I also don't use that a whole lot. I don't know if that's just my woodworking style or the fact that I usually will process or buy flat wood that's already processed or I don't know, I'm using it on the CNC or the graver. But either way, bandsaw lives there most of the time. To the right of it is the Otour laser engraver in its enclosure. That's primarily where a tour lives. It's got its little vent hose with the exhaust fumes, goes out the window. I got my tablet that runs it and the CNC. My dust collection system is in the middle and then my Shipoko Pro CNC is over in the corner. The Shipoko CNC was the biggest purchase of 2020, no doubt. And honestly, it was kind of the beginning of the end of Sam by a lot of standards as far as transitioning away from traditional hand tools, power tools to make things to more of a design prototype manufacturer 
do it on a CNC, engrave it on the laser type form of makerology. I don't get to use my CNC much, not as much as I really wished I could, because my local supply of material for it has all but evaporated. The nearest place for affordable lumber and affordable sheet goods to use for the CNC is about two hours away. So from a business standpoint, that's why things kind of dried up. From a content standpoint, that's why things kind of dried up. It's hard to make videos or make products when you have to drive so far just to get the base material and prices have gone up to where, unfortunately, for another time being, the CNC is kind of sit over here in the corner and gets used occasionally, but mostly just for personal projects or fun things for video content. I did buy the CNC with the hopes that I could start my business from it, and it did have a good kickstart for my business, but it didn't really do much as far as tangible selling of goods. However, the content around the CNC seems to be very good. It's probably how or why a lot of you found my channel and probably got to know me as a person and had fun in my shop together. So don't worry, CNC staying. My goodness, it is staying. It was way too expensive not to use. And I do hope that whenever things settle and we get to our new location, that I'll be able to find a better supplier, a good supplier, and bring the CNC back in action. Because I really have a ton of ideas, a ton of things I want to make, I want to design, I want to prototype, that I'm just being held up right now from a material supply standpoint. I glazed over it, but here is my super simple hand tool wall. This was a cool little project. There's a video on that. There's a video on all this stuff, but this hand tool wall, I really, really like. It is dead simple. It's a piece of oak board that was salvaged from a TV cabinet and largely finished nails just to outline and hold my hand tools in place. That has been really handy. That is something that I want to emulate and recreate in my new shop where I'm going. The organization and the visual interest of that tool wall is something I really, really like. So. Hope you like it too, because that is going to be copied where we go. Moving on around, CNC is right here. This is the back wall. This is where I have a lot of my cordless tools hanging. Yeah, they're majority craftsmen. Actually, they're all craftsman tools. I started off by buying an eight piece toolkit a couple of years back. That kind of got me into the world of a battery ecosystem. And from there, craftsmen had a lot of other tools they offered. I had need for those tools, so I just stuck with the line. I'm not a diehard craftsman fan. Honestly, it's the brand model tool that I could afford, so that's why you see me use them and have them in my shop. That being said, any tool companies out there want to sponsor me and make me change my colors, yeah, shoot me an email. Longtime viewers will remember when I made that cabinet, it is still in use and still storing junk up there. Otherwise, this whole explosion in the corner is just mess. This is what happens when it is out of the view of the camera and it's just general stuff that I don't know where else to do, so I just toss it over there in the corner. That's how it is. Every good workshop has its junk corners, and of which I have two. One for stuff, the other for scrap wood. So there's not much to see over there. Circling on around, we have the doorway to the storage and the home office area. It's again, kind of a dead space now, but whatever. That's what that portal behind my head goes to. And then over in the corner, you can see that is my material storage, my scrap wood, good wood, turning blanks, whatever. Anything I have left to work with is in that corner. It's a mess, but it is what it is. Here in the middle of the shop is my workbench. This is about a two foot by four foot workbench. The very first workbench I ever built, way back when I just barely started into making things and whatever, I found this plan, I think from Popular Woodworking on YouTube. It was their easy DIY workbench. Well, she's still going. And it works okay. I have it set right here, and then across from it is my table saw router combo. It's an older, rigid, cast iron top 10 inch table saw. And then on the extension wing, I put a piece of melamine and I put my router inside of it. Now, from a maximize your tools in as much space as you can get, that's a great idea. However, from an actual usability, that's a horrible idea. So, I will never repeat that again. If the day comes, I can have a different router table set up that will not be in the table saw. I'll have a table saw for a table saw and a router table for a router table. That just, it's the way it's gotta work because otherwise I don't know the last time I used that router and it's sad. It's a tool I need to use, I would use, but it's there and I don't really use it much. As far as what you normally would see in a shop layout, this center island of about four and a half by four and a half feet square being diagonal is really weird. No one would ever really do this. 
The reason this is like this is because I shoot content. I shoot videos. In this presentation, where normally you are here in front of our workbench, and behind you, you got some cool things of a CNC shop dust collection hose and the other cordless tools on the wall. That's the only reason that this is like it is. So normal people would probably have their table saw facing this way out the door for longer um, sheet goods to be able to feed in and out of a small shop. But for me, where primarily I shoot content and I make small items, things that are not sheet goods, this works out for me. And it's actually something I will emulate in my next workshop. The the ability and the ease of just being able to walk around it is something that I really like and that I want to take advantage of in the future. I mean, hey, ring around the table saw and workbench, right? Forget about Rosie. My pockets might be full of posy, but whatever. All right, guys, that's it. That's the shop tour. I'm, I'm not going to do any more on it. If you've watched my channel or seen my videos, I think you probably get a good sense of the layout of the shop. And if you've not, hopefully that was helpful either way. It's uh, about the end of this show, so you, you'll get to see the whole new one from the ground up at least. Now let's jump into part two, which is what exactly is leading me to leave my shop? What is happening? Well, my wife and I have decided to move out of the state we currently live in. We're currently in North Carolina and we are moving to Tennessee. We have purchased some land out there about four months ago and we are in the process of moving ourselves from here to there. This workshop cannot be moved. It is too large to move on the highway or interstate. It would be too expensive to have it disassembled and moved by a professional company. And it just was never built or designed to be moved anyway. It is what it is. I have come to terms with the financial loss or fooey. You don't get to take your shop. You've got to spend money to build a new one. I don't, I'm not worried about that. I'm not upset. And actually I'm kind of excited because I'll get to take everything I've learned from this, everything from construction, layout on a property, orientation with the sun and internal shop layouts and do it better with the next one. Okay, now for the fun part. What is the future of Samcraft? Well, I'm gonna be building my own workshop. It is going to be completely self-built by myself and my wife, if she can help me. And it is going to be built in a storage shed inspired format. It's not gonna be a quote unquote dream shop. Definitely not by standards anyone sees on YouTube. It will still be a small workshop. It's gonna be 12 feet wide by 20 feet long. And it is gonna be a budget friendly, budget minded workshop. So hopefully that resonates with a lot of people out there. Hopefully a lot of people watching my channel will be excited to see that I'm upgrading to one that is actually smaller in square footage to my current one, that I'm happy for that and that I'm gonna be doing a lot of budget-minded shop tips, shop projects, and get to rebuild something from the ground up. I already have my shop layout as far as construction done. I spent all the time on SketchUp, designing it and building it piece by piece so that I could order my materials list and know exactly how to build this thing. It's one of the things I love to do is build something on a computer, before I build it in real life. It's a great learning curve. It doesn't cost me any money. And it is just awesome that we're able to do that with the current time frame and technology that we live in. As you guys can see, it is shed inspired, which means it's on some four x four skids and runners. While I don't expect or plan for the workshop to ever be moved from where it's at or need to be moved, I don't wanna make the same mistake I made here by making a permanently fixed structure to the ground in case of X, Y, Z in the future. I also like doing shops like that because they're kind of easy to wrap my head around. They're simple foundations, they're portable structures, which gets you around a lot of any kind of zoning or HOAs or any kind of other weird things you may have, although we don't have it where we live. You may have it where you live and it just is an easy thing to build it's very simple to think i want to build my shop how can i go about this and just travel to one of these storage shed lots that are everywhere and look and take pictures of ones on their lot hey make some measurements see what their stud spacing is look how their roofs are framed up and then copy it yourself that being said i will probably only be copying the foundation style on skids and a little bit of wall framing techniques. Other than that, this is going to be very much an upgrade from a storage shed. It is gonna be a workshop that has eight feet walls and has a very steep pitched roof to give me storage lofts above, hopefully on both ends. Like I said earlier, this is a total 12 foot by 20 foot size workshop. My intention is that the door will be in the middle of the long wall and it should give myself 
two separate workbench ends of the shop and then also have a space in the middle for content production. I foresee myself having another island right in the middle and then having a display or tool walls behind me for video reasons. And then we can step left, step right, and kind of go into dedicated workspaces from there. My workshop is going to still be a chip that gets double dipped, meaning there will be video content that is produced there, but there's also going to be the continuation and running of my small business as well. So I've got to keep in mind that I need to do things smart for business and smart for YouTube at the same time. It's a unique hurdle for me. Not everyone out there is going to be jumping through these two hoops at the same time, but it is something that I want to share with you guys. As you see me make decisions, layout choices, and overall progressions of designs, you kind of bear in mind that I'm going to be different because I need to make my workshop a video studio while also having it be a functioning workshop. So let's talk about content. Hopefully you guys are excited and you are hoping and expecting and will be thrilled to hear that I'll be covering the full build start to finish on my Samcraft channel. This channel, the one you're watching in case anyone forgot. For a little real life update and status of the project, as of the making of this video, I already had the foundation, flooring, and walls framed. So definitely stick around and look out for that content coming up very soon. I'm gonna be publishing the progression and the build in chunks. So probably foundation, flooring, wall framing, roof framing, siding, you know, stuff like that in case, you know, anyone else wants to build a shed or a building and they want to see it in chunks. So that's my initial thought, at least on how this building and progression of the project will come around on videos. But my real life timeline, I really hope to get it done, at least dried in completely weather tight within a couple of weeks, maybe three at the most. Of course, that's going to depend on the weather as well. Can't really work on drying stuff in if it's not dry outside. All right, guys, I don't want to make this video ramble on longer than I'm sure it already has. And for that, I'm sorry, unless you like to hear me talk a lot, but generally people don't. So if you have any questions or comments about anything I showed shop tour wise, um, why we're going, what we're doing, new shop, definitely leave them for me down below. We're definitely really excited about the new changes and the relocation. It's something we've wanted for a long time that is finally working out and we are very happy as a family that we're getting the opportunity to do this and hopefully you guys are excited to see the new content and progression as well. If you have any questions or comments leave them for me down below. Otherwise take care and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop or out in a field building the workshop. Yeah that's realistically where it's going to be.